until you got your degree and could earn a living. I know, Dad, but it's not working out. I just need to be on my own. How are you going to study? How is Peter going to do well in school and pay for this new apartment? Tell me that. Plenty of kids do it. But Peter, it's not going to be easy. Fine, fine. But I bet he'd be back here in two months. Make it one. In your textbook, that's pages 35 to 75. So remember, that's 40 pages for next week. And there will be a quiz. Goodbye. This is only the second week of class. She's just trying to intimidate us. Hey, maybe she's trying to intimidate you into not falling asleep in class again. See you next week, Frank. Don't worry, you didn't snore much. I'm not sure I'm really cut out to be an accountant. Everybody else in that class is much more on top of it than me. Frank, you're going to do fine. Don't sweat it. Yeah, we'll see after that quiz. Did you ask your daddy if you could spare a truck tomorrow for a few hours? Yeah, no problem. I told him you were moving out, and he told me not to get any ideas. <laughs> How did your parents take it? My dad was less than three. Thinks I should be saving money. How about your mom? Oh, my mom's great. You know, she's always by my side, and my dad's the one I got to worry about. You're keeping this? Yeah. Wrong. Peter, you never even kept your own room straight. How are you going to go to school, buy your own food, buy your clothes, and keep an apartment in order? Well, it's beyond me. But I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Mom. Do you think Dad will come around? It's tax season, he's overworked, and your moving out just adds one more worry. You don't have to worry. I'm going to make it. Well, determination's a good quality. It's, it's too bad you won't be able to afford maid service. I'll manage. You'll manage. Come on, you guys. Let's get going. I want you to know, Pete, I'm working up a main hunger over here. I think I packed the crackers. Crackers? I'm talking about burgers, pizza, <laughs> maybe a steak, some chicken. What's your stuff, man? Oh, man. It's the last trip? This is it. Party time. Oh, yeah. Is your service for 24 on this box? Nah. This is great, Pete. I think I'm gonna get my own place. Frank, forget it. When do you ever go for more than two weeks without borrowing money from me? Who got you your job? Just because I have a part-time job at your dad's greenhouse doesn't mean I have to loan you money. I always pay you back. Eventually. Yeah, eventually. Tell that to the phone company, the electric company, the grocery store. Your landlady. You have to have everything planned down to the last dollar, otherwise... Otherwise, you have to ask your parents for more money. Come on. Look at this. How can they stick you with a $40 rent increase when you just moved in? What about your lease? There's a note from the landlady about that. My lease says all she has to do is give me a 30-day notice to raise the rent. She says she hopes the increase won't be a problem. What am I going to do? I could pay you back the $5 I owe you. Sorry. Look, why don't you just go talk to your landlady and try to reason with her? You didn't meet her. Mrs. Logan didn't strike me as a reasonable person when it comes to money. It's worth a shot. Otherwise, you'd be back living with your parents. Yeah. I'd rather face Mrs. Logan than tell my dad he was right. About what? He thinks I won't make it on my own for one month. <laughs> Big deal. 
My dad doesn't think I'd last for one day. I'm terribly sorry. I just wasn't prepared for the size of this tax increase. It's OK. We'll just finish the apartments we're working on now. And I hope by the summer I can have you do the work on the hallways as we'd originally planned. Thanks, Mrs. Logan. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Peter Sung, isn't it? Is everything satisfactory in 401? That's what I came to talk about. Well, come on in. You know, of course, we did paint before you moved in. And we checked the plumbing and the appliances. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the apartment, Mrs. Logan. It's great. The whole building's really great. And the grounds are in excellent shape. I should know because I have a part-time job in a greenhouse. Well, how nice of you to stop by and tell me how pleasant everything is here. You know, most people only stop by when they have a problem. Actually, now that you mention it, there is a small problem. The rent increase. Now, why doesn't that surprise me? You know, you are the third person to come by today to complain about the increase. It is a little steep. Oh, steep. Peter, you want to talk about steep. Now, just take a look at the, the whopping increase in my property taxes. Just look at that. And last year, I had increases in my utilities. Gas, water, electricity, plus yard and building maintenance. My costs have just gone through the roof. So you pass the increase on to your renters. Oh, believe me, I'm not happy about raising the rents. It makes it harder for me to fill vacancies when they occur. Why don't rents go up everywhere if there's a property tax increase? Well, in town, it's likely. And if people can commute, there are a couple of nearby communities that did not raise their property taxes, so their apartments are probably cheaper. I just hope it doesn't hurt my business. Well, Peter, thanks for your input. I understand what you're saying, Mrs. Logan, but do you think it's possible just to postpone my rent increase for a few months? You see, when I took the apartment, I thought the rent would be one amount, but now it's higher. Oh, and it could have been higher still, so be grateful for small favors. But I knew there was a limit to how much I could raise the rents, so to cut costs, I've delayed improvements on the building, and I've also let my gardening service go. Well, thanks. I won't take any more of your time. Peter, wait a minute. Look, I, I know you're a student, and you did just move in, so I'll tell you what. What? I'll let you out of your lease. Now, I, I will return your deposit, of course. Um, I still have some names on my waiting list, um, so if you could be out by the weekend. No. I mean, there's no problem. I'll manage. I'm staying. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. Especially since you like the building so much. Thank you, ma'am. Now what? Good to see you so early, Peter. Well, look, when you're finished, why don't you give me a hand with these flats, OK? Sure, Mr. Perini. Sure, Mr. Perini? <laughs> Peter. Peter, I've known you since you were this high. What's up? You could tell me. Actually, I was trying to figure out how to ask you for a raise. A raise? You just started two months ago. I know, I know. Then maybe you could give me some more hours. I really need the money. No way, Peter. I just got hit with a big property tax increase on my business and on my home. As a matter of fact, I was trying to avoid cutting back on people's hours. Come on. Why don't you tell me what this is all about? Come on. Mr. Perini, it's about the property tax increase. My landlady got an increase, too, so she passed it on by raising her rents. Mine went up $40. Ouch. Well, that's how businesses solve some problems. You take me. I could pay for a tax hike by raising the prices a little and by taking lower profits. But 
that still doesn't put me in good position to give raises or add more hours. My problem is I worked everything in my budget out to the last dollar. And the rent I thought I would be paying was all I could afford. But now it's $40 more, and I don't have it. I wish I could help you out. I used to think business taxes were just paid by, you know, businesses. Sure, but uh, you unfortunately learned that those taxes can be passed on to customers or renters. I think that's what's called an indirect tax. <laughs> exactly. A business sends the money to the government. But the business gets money from people who pay higher prices, or get lower wages, or make lower profits. Those are the people who really pay the taxes. Come on, Peter, help me out with this, OK? Yeah. Well, when people say that businesses should pay more taxes, it's those people who are really the ones who end up paying in the long run. Now, there are taxes called direct taxes that can't be passed on. I mean, like income tax. I guess the only way to avoid it is not to earn income. <laughs> exactly. Or it's like the property taxes on my house. Who could I pass them on to? Myself. I'll just have to cut back on some things. Oh, hiya, Pop. <laughs> like maybe Frank's food budget. Oh, come on, a guy's got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Mr. Perini. I'll get back to work. Hey, Peter, how's Frank doing in school? He seems nervous. It's, it's not like him. He's just feeling the pressure more. It's not high school. Look, I know it's none of my business, but uh, I've known your father for a very long time. And, and look, I know he'd be glad to have you come back home if things don't work out. I know, Mr. Prenny, but I just need to be on my own. <laughs> yeah, starving, but on my own. Hey, Peter. How's the search going? Shh, no luck. What are you searching for? A new apartment, one he can afford. Yeah, but rents have gone up all over town, just like my landlady thought. Hey, that's my lunch. You eat popcorn for lunch? It's cheap. Good afternoon, everyone. Kevin, you want to plug this in for me? Thanks. Now then, here are the results of last week's quiz. On the whole, the class did fairly well. But I'd like you to pay special attention to the video today, because it's going to cover some of the material that many of you are weak on. Oh, and I would like to offer my congratulations to the one perfect paper in class, to Mr. Perini. Frank, you fooled me. I could have sworn you were sleeping when I presented that material. OK, then. Open up your notebooks, because this material will be on your final. It's about direct and indirect taxes. <laughs> a direct tax is a tax that cannot be shifted to other people. The person who pays the money to the government loses the real resources. An example of a direct tax is the federal income tax. You pay the income tax to the government and you lose real resources. An indirect tax is a tax that can be shifted to other people. Money comes from outside, so the persons paying the tax to the government do not always use their own resources. The sales tax is an example of an indirect tax. The owner of the business pays the money to the government, but the money comes from customers who pay higher prices for items covered by the sales tax. Another example of an indirect tax is a payroll tax. The owner of the business pays the money to the government, but the money can come from paying lower wages to the employees. So in effect, the employees are really paying the tax. A property tax is a direct tax if it is placed on an individual home. The homeowner pays the tax and loses resources. A property tax is an indirect tax if it is placed on a business. The owner of the business pays the money to the government. Some may come from profits, but some may come from customers who pay higher prices. And some may come from employees who receive less take-home pay. Of course, the taxes we do pay benefit us when they pay for public goods and services, like national defense, street lights, highway maintenance, unemployment benefits, 
or a fire department. If we want these benefits, we have to pay for them with taxes, either directly or indirectly. I learned all that stuff from my dad one night when he was explaining the business to me and how you deal with the tax increase. I know how I deal with it. I eat popcorn for lunch. <laughs> Seriously, Peter, what are you going to do? I've decided to ask my dad for money after all. He'll yell for a while, but how bad can it be? Now then, does anyone have any questions on the difference between direct and indirect taxes? More meatloaf? I've really missed your cooking, Mom. I'm sure you have. Now, Victor, please don't start. I didn't say anything. And you weren't saying anything when you bet Peter that he'd never last more than a month on his own, I suppose? Peter's grown up now. He knows how to take it. That's right. Doesn't bother me. I'll get some coffee. I'll clear the table in a minute, Mom. So how are things going out there in the real world? Things are terrific, Dad. Better than I expected. landlady about this place. The yard's starting to look like a dump. What? The yard's a mess. I saw her out there watering the bushes like she didn't know which end of the hose was which. Frank, you're a genius. So what? She told me before I just didn't pay attention. She had to let her garden service go. Peter! Hey! So she doesn't have a gardener. It's not a tragedy. Mrs. Logan. Whoa, Peter. Oh, I'm sorry. Be careful. These things I'm can be so dangerous. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm interested in taking care of your yard work. My yard work? Yeah. I'll take care of the watering, the planting, the raking, the mowing. And in the winter, I'll do the snow removal and salt the walks. Well, it has been more difficult than I thought trying to get along without a yard service. People are starting to complain. Oh. But you're going to school. You've got a part-time job. How are you going to get all this work done? I won't do everything your other yard service did, but I'll keep the place looking good. It'll take about five hours a week, so how about $125 a month? How about 100 It's a deal. No, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Dinner will be ready in a minute. Peter, forget what I said about maid service. How come you never kept a room this neat at home? Because I knew if I waited long enough, you'd do it for me. Oh, thanks a lot. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's a very well-maintained building, especially the grounds. Yeah, there's a new gardener. Very good. So what's cooking? The content of Understanding Taxes was developed in cooperation with school and economic education agencies from across the United States and Economics America, the National Council on Economic Education. Understanding Taxes was produced under the supervision of the Agency for Instructional Technology in association with Action Productions Incorporated and Vince Clues and Associates.
funding was provided by the Internal Revenue Service.